Good morning. Uh, so, welcome to today's class. We were discussing polarization transfer. So, in this concept we have seen that if two spins are coupled say spin A and spin X coupled by dipolar coupling then if you perturb one of the spin or saturate the population between two states of spin A the effect of that will be seen on the other spin which is called nuclear overhauser effect. So, resonance line intensity change can be caused by this dipolar relaxation from the neighboring spin and with the perturbed energy level of one spin. So, here we have seen spin A and spin X. So, if you are perturbing spin A the effect of that perturbation will be seen on a spin X. So, for, for this effect to be seen they have to be interacting, interacting through space and, and since it is interacting through space. So, there is a distance dependent phenomena. So, if say r is the distance between these two spins, so if distance increases the dipolar interaction between them will increase and therefore, the effect will be uh, becoming lesser and lesser. So, because dipolar interaction drops with a distance and so this actually varies 1 to the power r by 6 that we have seen. So, as we move it falls rapidly. So, NOE effect can occur only up to 5 to 6 angstrom and after that there will be no NOE effect uh, seen in general. We have also seen that uh, effect of like NOE enhancement depends upon a factor that is called mixing time. So, this mixing time we had seen if we are doing a transient NOE where we, we apply a selective pulse on one of the spin and then we mix it for say time Tm and then we record a spectrum. So, this mixing time actually um, dictates how much NOE effect will be seen and for short mixing time this is linear. So, here one can see that there is a linear, but if you have like longer mixing time after a certain time it falls rapidly and this falls of NOE enhancement or decrease in the NOE enhancement is due to a phenomena which is called a spin diffusion. That means in a simple term spin loses out its magnetization to other spin and then you do not see that much enhancement. So, in short time uh, regime like short Tm it is a linear and that, that is typically used for measuring the distance in molecules, macromolecules or biomolecules. So, non-linearity in decay of the NOE at higher mixing time is a consequence of leakage to the lattice. So, spin is leaking to the surrounding and that contribution can vary according to cross relaxation rate and this is called spin diffusion. Spin diffusion is spin is diffusing to the other spins or lattice they are just losing out. So, we had seen that this NOE concept is very very important in a structural biology. So, you can actually do the same concept and you can take that in a 2D spectrum where you just this is the mixing time that we discussed in the previous slide. So, you can measure here in 2D fashion this is the pulse sequence this we will deal in detail when we go to 2D experiment, but at the moment just understand that much that depending upon what Tm we can mix the um, pins and actually this magnetization transfer or NOE effect can be seen from the neighboring spins. So, here you can see if this spin is closer to this spin, this spin is closer to this spin and all those they will be shown in the cross peak. Now, each cross peak is essentially reflecting the distance between two spins and somehow if you quantify the intensity of these peaks we can get to know the distance between these two spins. So, this NOGI concept is generally used uh, in the structural biology for measuring the interproton distances. Now, we had seen that earlier that for small molecules actually rho g is a better experiment, rho g is basically rotating frame rho g and we had also seen that for large molecule actually negative NOE we obtained for small molecule we can obtain positive NOE. So, for small molecules rho g is, is a better experiment and rho g you do not do anything extra, but you have a, a essentially a block which is called 
um, isotropic mixing block. So, it is like a, you are putting that there those springs in jet direction and let them mix and but these are through space connected. So, if that happens you get actual distance uh, constraints in a small molecule and that cross peak sign comes negative. So, why it comes negative we will discuss later when we go to like Noji and Roji in detail, but here to remember that for bigger molecules we use Noji for measuring the distance between two protons. For a smaller molecules like a small um, organic molecules we can use Roji for measuring the distances and both of these has common phenomena that is actually enhancement of the signal by polarization transfer where we perturb one of the spin and look at the effect on the other spin. Now, up to this point we had done earlier. So, now let us look move ahead this also actually we had done population distribution happens because of noji effect. So, we see because of relaxation population redistribute and we have seen previously that these are the population at different level. Uh, so, uh, for a x transition like x has a 2 transition x 1 and x 2 and for a you have 2 transition a 1 and a 2. So, difference between these population is the signal that comes for a and these are the 2 distances that signal comes from x. So, we had seen this pop different population distribution and how it changes because of relaxation. So, now let us move, move to interesting concept of selective population inversion and how we can enhance signal of one of the spin by doing this. Now, here these two spins that we are considering have two gamma right man they are not proton proton, but they are they can be carbon proton or nitrogen proton. So, let us consider this as a x spin system a x means the weakly couple uh, spin system like proton and carbon proton say on 600 megahertz resonates at 600 megahertz and carbon will resonate at say 150 and their j is typically around one, 140 or 120 hertz. So, in that case they are weakly coupled spin system. So, let us consider that and x is insensitive because it is gamma say gamma of 13 C we know that actually it is a 4 time less than gamma of proton. So, this is 4. So, this nuclei is insensitive nuclei. So, suppose we have a weakly coupled spin system A x where A is proton and x is x nuclei like carbon or nitrogen which is insensitive. So, in that case here is the uh, energy level diagram for this spin system. So, we have 4 states state 1, state 2, 3 and 4. Now, the population of these states is suppose we have a delta plus delta, here we have minus delta plus delta and here we have minus delta minus delta fourth and here we have delta minus delta. So, now two transition that is happening for A spin is this one and this one A 1 and A 2. So, now A 1 and A 2 and for x it is happening x 1 and x 2 x is our insensitive nuclei. So, the intensity of each of the peak will depend upon the difference in the population. So, for A 1 the, the difference is from here to here. So, that is plus 2 delta. So, this minus this that is plus 2 delta and for A 2 this minus this. So, like here delta minus delta minus minus delta minus delta. So, that is actually 2 delta that is how A 1 and A 2 have intensity equivalent to 2 delta and they are sensitive nuclei. So, they have higher intensity for x nuclei which is insensitive nuclei. So, similarly we can take for x 1 and x 2. So, this minus this. So, big delta cancelled out and a small delta adds up that is 2 delta and for again for x it is 2 delta. So, these are in intensity for 2 insensitive nuclei that is 13 C suppose and this is say proton. Now, that is typically case we have for a proton carbon spectrum and this uh, difference in the intensity is because of the population distribution. So, x is less sensitive nuclei therefore, signal is less and population is also less. 
Now suppose we do a trick. So what we are doing? Now uh, the two transition that we had is essentially a1 and a2 and then for x we had x1 and x2. So intensity for a1 and a2 that is what we looked is 2 big delta and for intensity for x transition is 2 small delta. So let us do a trick. The trick is that now we selectively apply a pulse on a1 this transition. So selectively apply a pulse 180 degree. So 180 degree pulse is for inverting the population. So we are now inverting the population in this A1 transition. Okay. So what is the effect of happening because of this inversion pulse? So now take the difference for A1. So this minus this is essentially A1 a1 intensity will be state 1 minus state 2. So, that will be minus delta plus delta minus delta plus delta. So, that will be minus 2 delta and for A2 it will be as usual plus 2 delta. So, this is for this and this is for this. Now, A1 because we applied a selective 180 degree pulse, so it inverted and A2 remain unchanged. So, because of this inversion something happens to X transition. Now that is very very interesting. So, what is happening to X transition? So, now as we said we applied pulse on A1. So, population level of state 1 and state 2 changed and intensity of X1 and X2 becomes now actually 2 big delta minus 2 small delta sorry. 2 big delta plus 2 small delta. Now we can just go back and have this. So 1 minus 3 is for x1. So intensity for x1 is minus delta plus delta minus delta minus delta. So if you see this, this is actually minus 2 delta right. So, that is what intensity we have for x transition that is substantial change in the x transition. Okay. So, change in the intensity of this transition from equilibrium state that that is what we calculated is now plus 2 delta and minus 2 delta that is a substantial change in the intensity for x spin. So, now what we did by, by doing this. So, earlier we had a intensity for x that was small 2 delta. Now, if you look at from the equilibrium, it is a big 2 delta. So, that is a significant enhancement in the signal for x spin. So, by perturbing a spin, we are getting enhancement in the signal for x spin and that enhancement is substantial. So, how much enhancement we are getting? So, now because of perturbation, we, we got it essentially 2 delta and earlier we had 2 small delta. So, big delta and earlier we had now and earlier we had this right. So, essentially we are getting enhancement of big delta divided by small delta. Here you can see if we have perturbed A spin, we are getting enhancement in X spin. So, X1 and X2 and that enhancement is in tune of big delta divided by small delta. So, that is equivalent to ratio of the gyromagnetic of these T nuclei. So, gamma A divided by gamma X and gamma A divided by gamma X is 4 times. So, for a 13 C H coupled system, we get enhancement factor is up to 4. So, although these two spins are of opposite sign, but enhancement is 4 times. So, if you take for nth system where gamma of h divided by gamma of n is essentially 10. So, for nth system we will get 10 times enhancement. This is huge. Perturbing a spin we are getting enhancement for x spin 4 times for a ch system and 10 times for a nth system. Okay. So, selective inversion provided us a significant advantage for sensitivity enhancement. We are perturbed one spin, we are getting 4 folds or 10 folds uh, enhancement, but there is a problem. 
problem is what that like here as you look at I put out only one transition in A spin. So, that means our inversion pulse has to be transition selective so that it only perturbs A 1 spin. Getting that clean pulse 180 degree is, is little difficult task. So, and especially when it is a crowded spectrum where you do not have a transition very clearly defined like where resolution are poor in a crowded spectrum getting a transition selective pulse which will selectively invert one of the transition is difficult. Therefore, in those case it can mix up and the enhancement that we are getting may not be that clean. So, to circumvent such problem actually a method was developed and this method is called inept. What inept means insensitive nuclei enhancement by polarization transfer. So, let, let me explain each of these term one by one. Insensitive nuclei, insensitive means low gamma nuclei, low gamma what we mean? So, generally proton has a high gamma, low gamma is like where population levels are not too far apart. So, like carbon 13 and 15 phosphorus many other nuclei are low gamma nuclei and they are essentially insensitive nuclei. So, we want to enhance the signal of this low gamma or insensitive nuclei by transferring the polarization from high gamma nuclei which is proton. So, if you transfer the polarization from proton which is high gamma nuclei to carbon 13 or nitrogen 15 which is low gamma nuclei that method is called inept, insensitive nuclei enhancement by polarization transfer that is inept. So, what actually it is? So, it is a set of pulse that I am going to explain you in a moment and this is this pulse sequence actually helps to circumvent the issue related to selective inversion because as we see if the transitions are not far apart then getting 180 degree selective pulse is difficult. Uh, so, in those case in, in inept case we do not need that transition selective pulse one can use non selective pulse and which is called hard pulse like symbol for hard pulse is like a square shape and soft pulse are something like this. So, hard pulse means their bandwidth is quite high and soft pulse that bandwidth is low that is how they call it hard pulse and soft pulse. So, duration is short that means like duration of this hard pulse can be of few microsecond. So, bandwidth is in going to be in uh, like 1 by microsecond that will be in tune of say kilohertz or even megahertz. So, few microsecond this megahertz tune and the soft pulse will be larger duration like 200 millisecond or 500 millisecond therefore, actually their bandwidth is in kilohertz. So, even if you look at so to selectively excite one of the transition in this pulse you need a bandwidth of few hertz and that means pulse has to be very long long pulse has its own uh, problem, one problem that can be even non select uh, like it cannot be very precisely selective that can leak out. So, to circumvent such problem this method was developed where we can use hard pulse and you do not need to selectively like use transition selective pulses. So, what this pulse sequence is let me explain you. It says that we have two spins. So, here is our spin number 1 which is A spin and spin number 2 is X spin that is why these are two channels. So, channels that means a frequency channel. If you are doing uh, experiment at say 14.7 Tesla which roughly correspond to say 600 megahertz. So, that means proton channel will be ar around 600 megahertz and carbon channel will be around 150 megahertz that is why they are two different channels. So, their RF synthesizer will work in different regime and that is how they are two channels. So, now on A channel we are applying a first 90 degree pulse in x direction. Then we are waiting for certain time which is tau. Then next step we are doing applying a 180 degree pulse on both channel A channel and x channel. Next we are waiting for same time period which is tau and next we are applying a 90 degree y pulse on a channel followed by a 90 degree x pulse on x channel and then we are detecting 
now my resonance should be in x y plane which can be detected. So, that is a simple pulse sequence for inept starting with a 190 degree x pulse then waiting for a tau period, tau period I will just explain you a minute what actually it is then waiting for tau period then applying a simultaneous pulse 180 degree x pulse on a spin and x spin again waiting for a tau time period then apply a 90 degree y pulse on a spin followed by a 90 degree x pulse on x spin and detecting it. So, what happens because of this polarization? So, this is the vector diagram let us understand if I go back first thing we did we applied a 90 degree pulse on a channel. So, A means proton. So, suppose we, we were always discussing two transitions. So, two vectors here, two vectors we applied a pulse 90 degree pulse on A. So, that means they will go to minus y. So, just a thumb up rule. Now, here I have drawn a circle, I written z x y. First thing we are doing applying a 90 degree pulse on A channel 90 degree x pulse. So, initially magnetizer was in z direction, we applied an x pulse. So, you apply x pulse on z, it will go to minus. So, if it, it is moving anti clockwise, it is a minus, if it moves clockwise, that is a plus. So, x pulse applied on z magnetization, it will lead to minus y direction. So, that is why we have here these spins are in minus y direction and two spins because we have a it is a x couple system. So, we have two transition one vector shows one of uh, one of the transition. So, a 1 and a 2 both now are in minus y direction. Then I said I have to wait for some period which is tau period. Now, what is this tau period that is very important. So, tau is basically will be dictated by what is the coupling constant between these two spins. And we will see in, uh, in coming classes that if you keep your tau which is equivalent to 1 by 4 j, j is the coupling constant between like 13 c and proton. If you keep that now that will help you in transferring the magnetization from one spin to another spin when they are coupled through bond. So, that is the tau period tau is equal to 1 by 4 j. So, if you wait for that spin and we are not doing anything. So, we have started like this then we are waiting for tau period. So, now in that wait period spins will start moving in opposite direction from like minus y axis. So, here is my minus y axis and both of these spins in the second case they started moving second case what I mean by. So, here both are spins are in minus y direction and then during this tau period they are like started from here and they are now moving like this moving like this. So, that is what is shown here. So, now though both of these uh, vectors are moving in opposite direction. Then we had applied 180 degree pulse on A and 180 degree pulse on X. So, let us look what is happening here. So, we had applied 180 degree X pulse on A. 180 degree pulse will create inversion. So, now these two guys were moving like this here now they it will create inversion. So, they will move like this and that is what actually it is shown. So, here 180 degree pulse now they change the direction and they will be they will be going in this direction they will be coming along plus y direction. Simultaneously we had applied 180 degree pulse on x. So, that actually changes the direction of, uh, of the uh, precision. So, then they will start going in opposite direction ok A1 and A2. Now, next after this these two pulses we are waiting for after this pulse we are waiting again for tau period. So, if you look at the vector diagram we started like this then during tau period they were like this and then like uh, we inverted like this, but they were coming like this. So, up we applied 180 degree pulse on x. So, they changes the direction and they again are going further. Now, after again time period tau which is again 1 by 4 j, they will align along 
x axis. So, one will be minus x and another will be x. So, now then we are applying a y pulse the magnetization in x direction. So, we are applying a y pulse on a spin. So, what we are doing 90 degree y pulse. So, if you apply here if you apply a y pulse when magnetization is in x. So, it will go to z direction. So, now my magnetization uh, for a spin will be along plus z and minus z. Now, my magnetization is in z direction for a spin it is in z direction. So, next we applied here a 90 degree x pulse. So, so 90 degree x pulse here population inversion happens. We have started both this transition in z direction, but at this stage what we have done? We inverted one of this spin if you look at. So, then we apply a 90 degree x pulse on x spin and that transfer the selective polarization uh, enhancement happens on x spin. So, that is why we have now enhanced signal for x spin, but only caveat here is that both of these transition will have opposite sign, but their signal has been enhanced. That is how in NAP you enhance this signal for x spin by application of this pulse sequence, which is nothing but couple of pulses which can be given by 90 tau 180 tau 90 90. So, we achieve the enhancement in the signal of, of these spins. So, that is what we have done. So, finally, we get an enhancement and this enhancement is actually equivalent to selective inversion of a transition here and consequent of that enhancement we are getting in x transition and that will be essentially governed by gamma a divided by gamma x. So, for if you are doing this experiment or carbon proton couple system we get 4 times enhancement and for nitrogen proton couple system we get for N15 we get 10 times enhancement. So, like selective population inversion we achieve enhancement, but of course will be of opposite direction. But inept has some disadvantage. One disadvantage we found it that both the signal for x spin are coming in opposite direction and uh, there can be intensity anomaly. So, incorrect relative intensity can occur because of different spin multiplication. So, for simplicity we considered only two uh, transitions one was like this and another was like this and we found that if we invert one of these x transition one was like this and another was like this. But what happens if there is a spin multiplate? So, then we have a problem because then again uh, it, we cannot get a clean enhancement. The another thing that we looked at one of the parameter that was there 1 by 4 j. So, now this j is playing important role because that dictates how much tau we are keeping. So, if the strength of heteronuclear uh, j coupling is, uh, is different then transfer of magnetization or population inversion can be different. So, this dictates how much transfer it is happening. So, two things j coupling and spin multiplicity uh, actually dictates uh, the transfer efficiency in case of inept. So, to get rid of that what we need to do we will look at this in next class. Based on today's lecture, if you have any question, do not hesitate to ask us, we will try to resolve it. Thank you very much.